it was a game like every other game. <laughs> you wake up in a hotel in some city and you go to the field and the game starts and it was a nice night in Texas. They clocked uh, the speed of the ball at 105 and uh, at that speed it's either going to hit you or it's not. There's nowhere for you to go. And um, it, it hit me so hard uh, when I turn that the ball ricocheted all the way to first base. When you get hit in the shoulder, you get hit in the leg, it makes a sound. But when you get hit on bone, it makes a sound that you never forget. So about 20, 30 minutes go by. Um, and Joe is telling me that they're now switching Evan from the hospital across the street to the university hospital. Um, but he didn't, he didn't know why. It was just kind of a rush thing. Time kind of just, I felt like it was going ridiculously fast and also just standing still. And I got a phone call from Andrew Hauser. And the first thing he said was, Evan's in critical condition. He has, his, his brain is bleeding. He has a skull fracture. My wife and I and the Diamondbacks were trying to find you a flight to be able to fly out tonight or tomorrow morning. We don't know if Evan's going to make it through the night. Evan, uh, you know, had a really bad set of circumstances. Um, a perfectly hit ball to the perfectly, the worst place in your skull to hit. Um, and um, some immediate bleeding. Um, which actually, even though in the situation where there were lots of help right there and they got him to the right place in the right time, still required surgery emergently to relieve pressure from the brain. I was slipping into a coma a little bit after surgery. They couldn't get me to wake up. Um, and so the neurosurgeon brought her and the dog in to see if they could talk to me and get me to wake up. And she came in and my, uh, my eyes twitched a little bit when she talked to me. Uh, and then our dog, um, he kind of caught wind of me and just got up close and he took his paw and um, he just hit me in the chest one time and uh, my eyes snapped right open. Because I got hit on the right side of my head so hard, the left side of my body wasn't um, responding it wasn't you know uh, my left leg wasn't walking um, as strong as my right leg I would uh, hear my left heel scuffing on the ground um, it was hard for me to hold anything with my left arm and um, the left side of my face was kind of drooping down uh, and unresponsive and so that caused me to slur my words a little bit one of the first things he said to me when he woke up is I still think I can be a September call-up and I'm looking at him, he's got the, you know, the 20, he's got the 18 staples on the side of his head, and then the, the two that they added after they took out like the blood tube, um, since he still had blood draining from his brain. Um, he, had, uh, he had a tube down his throat, and he had a breathing machine. Um, it, was just, it was a lot to take in the neck brace, and then to have that be something that he tells me, I'm just like, you were the strongest person I've ever met. He was very fortunate in the location of the brain, that the bleeding was outside the brain and wasn't deep in the tissues of the brain, so that allowed things to heal very quickly. It took some explaining for me to understand what I had just gone through. I knew I had gotten hit. If I took my hand and went down the side of my head, I had 20 staples, so I knew that I had been opened up. The Diamondbacks, they had me out on a plane at midnight. I got in at four in the morning with our dog and with our roommate and her dog. Um, and right, right before the plane took off, um, they, they called me and said that Evan had just gotten out of surgery <laughs> and that his, his brain, it was, the swelling was already starting to go down, that they found the bleed just right away. I've worked with the Diamondbacks in the past, so they called and told me they had a player and he, they thought he was going to need some rehabilitation services. Um, they were anxious to get started, um, probably more anxious than his brain was ready to get started, but um, they wanted to get out of New Mexico and back here to, to Arizona and get, and get going on the rehabilitation. 
facilitation. You never understand when it's going to happen, um, whether it's on a sports field, a car accident, you know, a, a fall, whatever might cause it. Um, you have to embrace the process because I'm as stubborn as they come and I told myself I was fine and I didn't want to do these things. Um, but they challenged me, you know, well, why don't you try to get up? And I got up and I struggled and then I was like, okay, uh, I really need to focus and, and work hard on this. And um, my determination and, and believing in what they were telling me that that's what really got me going. I think one of the questions I was asked when I first took care of Evan was, well, you know, how could this happen playing baseball? Oh my gosh, you know, it, is nobody safe? We thought this just happens in football. It can happen in our everyday life. It can happen in participation in sports. Um, the most important thing is that you get help and that you realize that even if the physical deficits aren't huge, that the, the help for the cognitive deficits and the support for how you think and plan and process and all that is just as important, if not more important. So I, I always encourage people, it can happen to anybody and you really just need to, to get the help and seek out the help. There's help available here in the community. When we got here to Arizona um, and him just being back in the home environments and just seeing his, you know, his teammates, his friends, coaches, still being around family. That was, that was when I truthfully could say, like, my husband is, is exactly back to how he was, which is still just absolutely mind-blowing to look, just because exactly what he said of, of being able to meet other patients and see other patients that a year later, their life is, is still just so, so different. Um, we feel extremely blessed and to see what he went through and to be told from that first night of what was going to happen to even after him waking up of being told, you know, he may not remember who you are. He may not remember any of this. Um, the left side of his body wasn't really responding. To see from all of that to him right next to me now, um, this guy's awesome. Like he's just, 